Kia ora kato, katoa. Welcome everyone um, to Innovative Approaches um, to Mentoring by Dr. David Turner. This seminar is recorded and it will be uploaded into the AES YouTube channel. Um, I'm Marini Sanka, your co-host. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the diverse lands in which we all come from. I'm speaking from Wellington, Aotearoa, and I acknowledge the leaders past, present and emerging from all of our lands. Today, we are very lucky to have Dr. David Turner talk to us about a mentoring pilot. Um, David has practiced research and evaluation across New Zealand, the New Zealand public sector, and um, he's a member of both AES and ANSIA. David also very kindly offers to um, um, volunteer for his pro bono research and evaluation services for the NGO and community sectors. Um, I will monitor this chat function for any questions you might have throughout the seminar, and we will have um, time for you to unmute yourself and um, ask the participants questions, um, any questions you have directly. So before further ado, um, over to you, David. All right, uh, I just wanna note that two of my fellow committee members, Julie Elliott and Jill Thomas are also part of this. So, let me just um, share screen because I've got, uh, here we go. And we're good. Right, so this is about a program that, that we developed and ran last year. Um, called group mentoring. It's intended to be an ongoing service offered by AES to members. Um, just wanna note that the working group that pulled it together and is continuing to do it. Julie is here, me, Francesca, and David Roberts are not present, but Jill Thomas is here. I just wanna mention that um, I'm intending to to not take up too much time with this briefing. I'm hoping that there will be some discussion and questions and ideas. So a brief description of what I mean by group mentoring. It's an online program. It's, it's, just, it's just through Zoom. Um, in each case, and a, one experienced practitioner acts as a mentor. You have six people taking part or less experienced. Um, Last year we had we had um, all AES fellows doing it. Um, the groups meet monthly, um, and one aspect of this is that you know it's entirely up to the discretion of the individual members. They can communicate outside, share ideas or whatever as they choose. That's that's up to group members. Um, in each case, the groups are expected to work out their goals, their interests, um, what they'd like to get out of it and and what they'd like to get from the um, mentors. Last year we piloted this um, between January and June. We had four groups um, meeting online. Um, and because this is an evaluation society, of course, and we advocate better evalu evaluation, um, we evaluated the pilot. We had capstan students from University of Melbourne, their graduate program in evaluation, um, and the Pathways Committee was supported it as well. Um, I'm going to talk some today about the results, what came out of that evaluation, which we hope to, which we plan to publish. Um, that evaluation drew on mentors, it drew on the mentees, it it involves surveys, focus groups, um, a number of you know uh, different approaches, and methods, um, and it made recommendations for the future of the program, it, including a recommendation that it should continue. I want to talk a little bit here about what the evaluation found from talking to participants, mentees. Um, people noted that they that they valued the chance to engage with peers, not just mentors. So, so there's a bit of a community of practice aspect of this. Um, 
they were looking for common ground. Sometimes the, the different people in a group, you know, they had things in common, like the sector where they worked or whatever. Um, generally, people express satisfaction with the process of matching them to groups and individual mentors. And part of the way that works is that the mentors, and they're doing this this year, write up short bios about themselves so people can express interest based on what they know of someone's background and what they have said they're interested in, in talking about. Um, one of the issues in the evaluation had to do with setting goals. Um, the, the, process, the way it seemed to work out is it didn't value that much um, goals like technical knowledge of evaluation. Um, they did go through a process, but that didn't seem, you know, specific learning objectives didn't seem to drive it that much. Um, people like the online approach. Um, there was some description, uh, the mentees said that they, through this process, they were coming to recognize their own expertise, um, better understand the knowledge and skills that they already had and, and reported increased confidence. Um, there were some reports of uh, better knowledge of evaluation theory and to various soft skills involved in evaluation, such as stakeholder management. Now, I also talked to mentors and so what some of the stuff that came out from the um, evaluation about the mentors, um, they talked about knowledge building rather than specific skills. Um, they thought the opportunity for their group members to talk with their peers as well as them was important. Um, got a sense of dynamics in the, you know, each group had its own dynamics and that changed over time. Um, some people may have been more engaged in the process at one point than another, for example. Um, they talked about the skills that they were using, that the, that the process required of them, and a couple of examples here, group facilitation and interpersonal skills. But of course they had to have evaluation expertise to answer questions and to engage with people. Um, they also found that, that they had to be active ensuring that participants would engage in the, in the group, stay engaged, engage with their peers. There are a few things that came up that you know, we just have to consider in, in this year and future years. Um, what is an appropriate, what sort of goals are appropriate for people to pursue through this, through this kind of group process? Um, what do the mentors and mentees expect and, and how well do those match up? Um, there's, you know, a challenge in, in participants establishing establishing that commonality, that, you know, uh, peer relationship with others in the group. Um, there are some questions about just how much structure people expect, um, how much leadership does the mentor have, and how much do you just let it flow? And um, finally, uh, similar to the, the idea of commonality, it's, it's just how do you get, create an appropriate chemistry in the group, um, so the so the the group gels and works together well. Where we are now, um, we're doing the the twenty twenty two round. It's we've got um, mentors have volunteered, and um, we've added. And there's an added role of an associate mentor in each group. That was a bit of an experiment last year. One group tried an associate mentor. So the idea is that someone can be involved one year as an associate mentor, and then maybe the next year be a mentor. Right? So that's, that's another part of personal development for them. Um, I say here, AES members will be asked, in fact, that is already out of date. <laughs> have been asked to express interest. Um, 
we expect it to run between May and November. We're thinking future rounds may run a bit longer because one of the comments in the evaluation is they'd like eight, an eight month program rather than six months. So um, that's my overview of how it works. Um, I deliberately did not take up the time because I would like to hear what you think and um, I'll turn it over to you now. Julie, Jill, anything you'd like to add? Um, I think only David that people love the program. Um, they universally said, run it again, please run it again. Some people said they felt like they'd won the lotto when they got selected as mentees into the program. And I suppose it felt, it really did reinforce for us that so many evaluators are standalone in their own organisations and feel extremely isolated. Um, and because of that isolation, have enormous self-doubt about what they're doing. And just the opportunity to talk to other evaluators um, and debate issues and realise they were sharing common concerns and, and pitfalls and struggles was really, really meaningful to the mentees. Um, the mentees who were involved with focus groups were, were very affirming of the program. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd agree with, um, with that, Jill. I, I think it's interesting in retrospect how we came up with the model. You know, it was sort of in the early days of COVID and so the online um, approach was seemed quite natural, but it was fortuitous really because what it meant was that we could bring together people from different locations um, who have interests in common and that's not really possible with face-to-face -face mentoring so the online group mentoring is for me the peer support it's not just about what happens in the six months I really kind of want to see how we um, how we emphasize and get it to work better so that the peer support um, aspect works a lot better so that people have relationships with their peers that go on way beyond the short period of the six months. So this, this mentoring process is really just setting up longer term relationships. People now have uh, peers that they can go to to talk things over. And that kind of talking aspect shouldn't be underestimated, I don't think. We are um, really going to focus, and um, Jill and David are both um, looking after the evaluation this year, and we're really going to be focusing on the program logic um, around what makes what makes the difference. So this as these two aspects of um, the peers, the uh, peer support, and developing those relationships. And just that opportunity for, for dialogue, for talking things over, thrashing things over um, that are of shared interest amongst the group. I'll, I'll, I'll be looking forward to seeing how that really comes through in the um, program logic and then when we, um, when we do the evaluation. So um, we do feel that this is an innovative model. Um, we've had a scan of the literature and, you know, a lot of the literature on mentoring is about youth mentoring or professional mentoring in the sort of workplace. <clears throat> but something like this does seem to be innovative. So we think that we've got something useful to contribute to the knowledge base. Um, I'll leave it at that, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, including... Um, anything that some of our mentors uh, that we've got here today might like to um, to raise and discuss and bring their thoughts forward. Thank, thank you. There are um, two comments. Um, Kara and Madi, would you like to unmute yourself and ask them directly? Yeah, sure. I was just going to say it would be, uh, I, I'm getting the sense that Maybe there's some been some men, some of the mentors on the call here, but it'd be nice just to get your personal reflections. And I think Julie, maybe that you've done that, possibly you, Jill. But 
anyone else, but also any mentees. It's always just nice to hear from the horse's mouth as the saying goes. Um, I've got lots of other thoughts, but I'll save them because I don't want to <laughs> monopolize the floor. <laughs> I'll save them if we have time. Yeah, thanks, Kara. One, one of the um, things that we've got asked the mentors this year um, is to describe their approach to, to mentoring. And um, on, the, on the AES website um, for the program, um, it, it, uh, each mentor describes their focus of interest as well as their mentoring style. And you know, there's some there's some sort of dif differentiation between the different groups, but mostly um, they're really emphasising um, flexibility, kind of participation, communication, um, and problem solving. Um, there's there's a there's a, a range of way things that they privilege that they think are in, most important for how their groups run. So the mentors that we've got here today are new to the program. Uh, for, for this year um, and we keep we hope to keep on expanding our mentor base our sort of mentor pipeline perhaps um, and re and but but actually finding mentors is not not easy people are often reluctant to be mentors um, so that's something that the program has to work on as well uh, finding people and supporting people. This year, we really hope to support the mentors a lot more than last year with um, providing more resources that would, were developed. So over the years, we'll be able to develop more resources and then feed them back and support, support mentors so that they know that they're not um, working in isolation, that they are part of a program. Can I just ask a follow-up question, Julie, on, yeah. on that? Because um, I've, I've watched with sort of interest on the periphery um, this idea develop and get rolling, which was lovely to see through being connected with David. Um, I wonder if there might be a number of people who would be fence sitters, and I'd probably describe myself as one of those who I've been around for a while, but I certainly don't feel... Um, like an expert uh, <laughs> at all, um, but know that you might have something to offer um, uh, to, to uh, newer or more, more emerging ones, but not always, like, I don't know that I would be able to particularly well, uh, wouldn't be able to articulate especially what that might be. Um, and so where there might be a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not a drafting process, but almost a bit of a supported process where you know you can say, look, I'm interested, you can take me or, or not, wouldn't be offended, but um, I'm here if, if, if someone who might sort of suit, need, you know, might, rather than it being a super formal process, uh, does that make sense? Um, I don't know what, it, what the sort of feedback's been like so far, but um, I guess I'm thinking of, to the future because it's always often you get the, the, the rush of enthusiasm early, but then trying to sustain initiatives, um, you often have to reshape it a little bit. Yeah. I, I think that it might not be as intimidating a role as um, you, you might fear. I think that it's um, six 90 minute discussions that you're, you're facilitating. And you're really trying to, as the mentor, you're really trying to bring out the interests um, of the mentees and supporting them to be able to engage in in-depth discussions. And so people with um, experience in evaluation are probably pretty, pretty good at that, you know. So we are certainly not um, looking at um, kind of, 101 teaching you know this isn't in this program is not in competition with the AES workshop program so it's not um putting people up as um as the trainer um or, or a seminar presenter at the front of the class where everybody where the mentees listen that's the opposite of what we're trying to to do um, so if 
tricky questions arise in um, in a session, some of the mentors last year would kind of take that on board as the focus for the next meeting. So it's a really iterative process. And that gives them some time to prepare for that session. So you kind of don't need to know the answers to all the tricky questions at the top of your head. Um, Jill and David, what, what do you think about this, this issue of Kind of people ready to be mentors. About mentoring for mentors. And I think we've tried to address that support issue with mentors through as a mentor support group who meet monthly as their own sort of little community of practice um, and put in place some structures to, to help that the mentors share ideas. We also learned a lot, I think, from the pilot about structures you can use in the group, online group setting that really help the group gel. And, um, and also really help the ment mentees to be really active participants. So some of those sort of hints and tips are things that we've been gathering together as a sort of tool bag. Um, but I think we also really do see that that um, men associate mentor, mentor partnering is a bit like an, a, a master apprentice partnering. And it, and it helps, it, it's intended to help people who, who think they'd like to be a mentor, but really don't want to do that on their own yet to, to sort of come in and work with someone else and um, and have that pipeline effect. But I agree with you, Julie. I, I don't think it, you need to be, um, you know, professorial and uh, have the ability to just, you know, snap, 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 answer every question. In fact, I think the richness of the group is about the dialogue that happens in between at the shared community, but also the leadership from the mentor. So the mentor certainly did things like shared journal articles, um, you know, prior to meetings so they could be discussed at the next meeting. You know, they, they certainly had, a, had some they had academic strengths, but they also had really well practically grounded strengths that were really very, very helpful. One of the really popular things one group did was they did a monthly BYO a problem. So everybody in the group was allocated a month when they could bring a problem to the table and that the group would workshop that. And that was really, really popular. People got a lot out of that. And because it had to be nominated up front and ahead of time, the mentor could also take a strong leadership in thinking those as issues through that were put on the table. I hope that helps um, understand how it sort of has worked in the past. I think another thing though with getting mentors on board is people are just so busy. That's been some of the feedback we've had this time around. Um, I just we, like I to did some um, inquiries with the mentors from last year and found that it takes a minimum of five hours a month in terms of attending the meetings and some preparation time and some sort of liaison time. This year we've actually got, uh, we've been lucky enough to secure a part-time project officer will be starting um, uh, with the AES um, very soon. So that will help us with um, a lot of the liaison. For the working group, there is quite a lot of work up front, um, the process that we're sort of uh, at in at the moment. And um, also for the evaluation itself and at the end, closing the program. But during the months that the um, program is running, we're, we're sort of less hands-on. We're not doing as much active, active work. There's a couple of questions coming through um, on the chat. Uh, Marty's asked a question about people dropping out. In fact, we had really quite a low dropout rate. Um, Jill, you might be more familiar with the, the numbers, but um, yeah, it, it was, was very low. It was only about... I think out of the 50 mentees are at three who disengaged. But um, it has to be said that with the evaluation, um, in, in terms of responding to invitations to be part of focus groups, we only got a 50% response rate. For people who work in evaluation, it was amazing. Um, and, and that we did stress it was a pilot and that we expected people to participate in it. And that was really important that that being part of the pilot meant that they would contribute to the evaluation. So that was very hard. And Jill um, and the evaluation team had to chase those people a lot. Yeah. Um, and, was, and we didn't actually get a representative good. sample in those focus groups. So 
we've got a few strategies up our sleeves to lock people in much earlier for that kind of participation. So in a sense, we don't know um, about why people didn't engage with the evaluation and there's um, a profile in the, in the participants that we couldn't engage with. So they might have a different story that we didn't get to hear. Um, yeah. And Marita has asked about um, the fact that this, this strikes me as a mix between an online community of practice with an element of mentoring. Um, I'd say that's, that's, that's correct. We're not um, a traditional sort of mentoring approach in yeah. that it is online and it, that the group element is really important. Mm. So it's probably more like starting um, a, and supporting a community of practice to get started. So some of the groups are from last year are still con continuing to, to meet and to engage with each other as a group, as well as, um, you know, one-to-one -one relationships with, um, amongst the group. Um, that is not being facilitated by the mentors anymore. And that's kind of what we would really like to see a lot more of, that these relationships are, are are being built and um, and then can be self-sustaining. Mm. So, um, Farida, did you have any um, more questions here? You'd say, said you'd like to be interested in how we're supporting mentors, how mentors are supporting mentees through specific issues that they faced. And um, Jill mentioned the um, the bring a problem um, that that some of the groups tried the way that that would work would be that a mentee would write up their problem, so really articulate it in a, um, in a page, which I think is really useful in itself. And then the mentor would have a chance to read through it and prepare um, before, before the, the meeting. So it's, issues would be brought up, um, you know, in the course of discussion. But then there was also this more formal process where um, it, where some issues were given um, a lot more time and people would take turns, as Jill said, that um, mentees would have the kind of um, the focus of attention for, you know, a period of um, a section of the meeting, taking their turns once, once a month. Um, the, we, we, we did not um, encourage um, uh, discussions between the mentees and the mentors to address kind of personal issues out of the sessions. So mentors are not on call to answer people's problems, to solve people's problems. But to add to that, I would say that um, quite a few of the groups did set up their own WhatsApp groups. And there was quite a lot of between, you know, during the, the intervals of meetings, a lot of communication going back and forth and quite a lot of resource sharing. Um, has anyone got a template for this? Does anyone know about that kind of stuff? So there was a bit of communication going back and forth during the month, but the mentors were only expected to participate, you know, in the meetings. Um, and, you know, we were directing... We were directing at the end of those... At, at the end of the program, we were saying who mentees... You please join a special interest group with the AES. Like we have, you know, the AES is not going to kind of structure or require ongoing community of practice to emerge, but some groups did want that and were doing it for themselves. So, you know, from the AES's perspective, if people wanted to continue to engage, then we were really directing them towards special interest groups. That sort of participation that we would support. One thing we have not talked about so far is that um, we have not yet been successful in really engaging Indigenous groups in this in this program. We did last year have some people working with Indigenous communities who were themselves non-Indigenous. We have we have tried we have approached different groups to see about bringing in mentors, finding ways to engage them, and have had that dialogue, but we haven't really got any, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't come together yet. So that's kind of a, uh, an objective of the program that we haven't got to yet. And I think we should just acknowledge that's a continuing challenge for us. Yeah, that's a work in progress. 
And there are about a couple of questions um, asking you about the themes and topics that were discussed. So we ask mentors to nominate the particular topic that they are interested in. It's really something that they sort of bring great enthusiasm to and, you know, could talk about endlessly, really. And so they nominate that topic and write it up in a way that, um, that looks appealing and then people apply to be part of their group for that reason. And then the group themselves decide what um, issues that they want to raise throughout the program. And that, so that's a collaborative participatory process that they agree on and, and, um, and they work through those things. And then other things, you know, topics can arise throughout um, throughout the program, and the mentor will say, "Should we talk about that further next time?" And so the list sort of evolves as as time goes on. But yes, I would expect that um, that um, what Kara has called age old challenges that crop up in evaluation practitioners' conversations do appear frequently. And that for, um, but it's always lovely to talk to other people about them. And that's very much, you know, in a, a focus point of, of the program that is really important to us. Um, that people, we have found that evaluators are often isolated. Not everybody can come to a conference, for example. Um, and so to have somebody to thrash these things out with is really great and people do feel comforted by the fact that other people have experienced those issues as well it's not just them so that's that's a really worthwhile thing um, what were the kinds of problems and issues that people brought to the table it would vary because of the different um focus Folk of the different groups. Most of the um, mentees would be beginning beginner evaluators of say two or three years minimum um, experience. Some of them will um, have you know ten years experience. So there's this quite a diversity there. What we actually found when we did the um, Re recruitment process last year at the beginning of the program was that there are many people who move into the evaluation field from other fields and so they've done very well in um, their career already and they're moving into evaluation maybe from a research positions or um, program management or policy positions and they're just trying to work out what is this thing um, evaluation and how do I transfer my skills across and um, that's a really important important segment so people you know as adults people bring all sorts of skills and knowledge sets and you know it's a multidisciplinary field so it always makes for interesting conversations doesn't it um, Julie I'd just like to um, raise a point which is that um, in the work that I did with human systems dynamics, I was actually involved in a group like this um, about two or three years ago. And um, we did actually end up setting up our own self-sustaining group, which still runs today. And so I've got people all over the world that I'm um, catching up with on a monthly basis. And it's been interesting to hear you guys talking about this because it's given me more clarity about the fact that what I did is actually what you're aiming to do here. So I think it's really exciting. And I think that a lot of it will actually just play out as you go, because it will depend on who's in the group. And I think that it can actually be really helpful to have people with two or three years experience and 10 years experience in the same group, because I know, and you've probably found the same thing, Cara, there's things that you've come across many times. And when someone that's been two or three years in talks about it, you go, oh yeah. But actually in talking about it with them, you find new ways to talk about it and become more um, competent in the way you're working with it. So it doesn't actually matter if you've got this big mix up of people in the group. In fact, that kind of diversity can be quite cool. So um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to say that because having um, heard a little bit more about this 
um, from you, Julie and David and Jill today. It's quite exciting what we're signing up for, actually. <laughs> um, you know, when you say yes to something like this, it is a bit of a leap of faith and you've kind of just got to find a, a way through it all, but it's sounding really good. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Judy's um, co mentoring a group that's going to be looking at managing evaluation in complexity. It's something that I'm very excited about. Thank you for joining the program this year, Judy. Do we have any other questions? Thank you, Jill, for putting the focus areas up on the website. I'm sure that's that's really useful. No problem. If you're thinking about becoming a mentee, please apply. <laughs> There's still time. But this year we've got five five groups running. Four of those groups have a mentor and associate mentee, and the fifth group just has a mentor. And um, we have we have a combination of new mentors and associate mentors, and some of the mentors from last year. So, so we've expanded slightly on last year, and we hope to expand again in uh in 2023 and get more groups up yeah and we should also mention we will be presenting about the program at the conference in september so hopefully we'll have some more evaluation emerging and um, more insights into the program theory and how it's evolving could i ask a quick question about if whether or not aes has ever done something similar to this in its previous in its previous history Actually, it's something that's been talked about for a very long time. And um, it came out of, um, I think there was a, a membership survey and um, strategy document, like it was given emphasis. And then the Pathways Committee were given the responsibility of looking, looking after it. And so we, um, we, the people on the Pathways Committee sort of had the responsibility of coming up with a mentoring program and then the design of this program that we actually developed. The design emerged from our conversations, which were around the early days of COVID. And I think that's really, really important thing to mention because the idea might, might not have come up the way it did. But yeah, it's been talked about for a really long time. I know I understand that the um, New South Wales group, um, regional group, is developing some sort of mentoring buddy buddy system, which might go more um, along traditional lines of one on one mentor mentor mentee relationship. But um, that would only be for people in New South Wales, mm -hmm. and this is the first. Um, first sort of program for all, all members. Um, last year we had a couple of members who were not in Australia. I think um, one was in PNG. Is that right, Jill? PNG? And um, yeah, I think that did. was a little bit a little bit tricky. It was um, very tricky. I think connectivity was such um, an issue for that person that they eventually discontinued. It just it was just really, really challenging for them. So that was a real shame. Um, but um, I think that was the only person outside of Australia and New Zealand who was participating. It, it really is an idea that's taken years to develop. I mean, I know several years ago, I actually wrote a proposal for the AES board that was much more along the lines of a traditional one-on-one -on -one mentoring program. And um, we had lots of debate and and the thinking just sort of evolved away from that um, to toward more of a group kind of drawing on community practice idea. It just kind of like 
develop a sense developed over time that that something like the group community practice idea would would better suit AES community. That just sort of that that's just kind of how it evolved. Um, but yeah, it's taken quite a while to actually try something. So I'm glad that we finally did. Um, what advice would you have for people trying similar initiatives from the lessons that you have learned so far? It's quite a lot of work. Mm. Would you agree, David and Jill, uh, on the part of um, everybody involved, the yeah. organising group? Yeah. Um, and at the beginning, the brave mentors who didn't really know what they were getting themselves in for, but um, vol volunteered anyway. So it takes a lot of commitment and courage and a lot of organising and design work. We have um, program guidelines and we've had to write lots of other material. So the working group has put in a lot of hours to, um, to pull that all together and to kind of work out any little issues, just as you would with any other, any sort of program design. So this is a, you know, a pretty small program, but it still needs all those design features. Um, and I think that that would be why it took so long to, to get off, off the ground. Yeah, we're pretty excited to have some money for a project officer this year that will really lift the load. Um, it is a lot of work to get it going. Um, yeah, that's kind of, I suppose that's the initial flow is, is figured through carefully. Um, there's a fair amount of work to be put in place, but it's worth it. And last year, we also had a series of fabulous um, students from Melbourne Uni. Um, because they put in a lot of work around the evaluation. It was part of their final subject, their capstone subject, but the work, the amount of work that they did for us was really beyond what a student is normally expected to do for their capstone subject. And so we were really, really lucky to get them on board. And, um, and uh, they worked together and and all students came on at the beginning of the program and as the semesters progressed, uh, new students would come on and just kept on adding and handing over to the next student and so the evaluation was really important to us to figure out what, what, what is working, what is making a difference, what we need to do. I certainly think we, um, as a as a member, we owe a, a great uh, gratitude to you all for for that because I I can only imagine the amount of voluntary time that's gone into it and it, the way that it's come together. I think we're quite fortunate with the timing with COVID, um, but I I genuinely hope that we can make it work in a way that's going to be sustainable because the value to members is I look, will be huge. So. Yeah, thank you so much for the time that you've all put into it so far. <laughs> Thanks, Cara. Right, well, does that, we ready to wrap it up then? Looks like there's no more questions. There's no more questions, but that is, thank you. Thank you so much, David, Julie, and, um, and Jill for, for giving a fantastic presentation on um, the mentoring pilot and yes I will consider <laughs> joining it I just have to check my calendar it sounds like a fantastic um, group to be a part of um, and thank you everyone for your participation